Today we're filming for the Hamilton College Jazz Archive in Aspen, Colorado at the Jerome Jazz Festival. I'm very pleased to have Norris Turney with me today, who's a saxophonist and woodwind player of much experience. And uh, I wanted to read something that a pretty well-known jazz writer said about you in talking about your recordings and so forth. He said, Norris Turney has a fine sound and style on alto sax, flute, and clarinet. His alto combines swing era urgency and fluidity with bebop era exactness and technical expertise. Do you agree with that? Sure. Sure. Sounds like a pretty good write-up to me. Yeah. It seems like last night um, in your performance, I heard a, actually a bit of of that stood out from some of the other players in my ears is that you had a lot of blues inflection in your playing, but occasionally bebop licks too. Yeah. Oh, well, I've, I've always liked the blues. Blues yeah. is my favorite song, always has been. Uh huh. Yeah. And growing up in um, Ohio, was that a part of the music that you heard as a child? Yeah. Did your parents have, have blues recordings, or where did you hear most of your music? Uh, we had to play the piano and uh, had some blues on that. And uh, then we got a radio. And uh, we used to listen to big bands. I was uh, Fletcher Henderson, Earl Hines, uh, Basie when he first went to New York. And uh, all the big bands, you know, Jimmy Lunsford. Uh -huh. Radio was a huge part of the way Oh, yeah. Information was spread at the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there a certain point that you um, decided that I'm going to be a musician? Well, I don't know. I, th I think I've been a mus I was born a musician because uh, when we were kids, my brother and my sister and I used to uh, roll up paper horns on the newspaper. And my brother played pots and pans. Oh, yes. Yeah. My sister was taking piano lessons. So we, we had a little concert every week. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were both very young. Yeah. yeah. Would you, would you actually play tunes, or were you kind of just improvising? Improvise. Yeah. 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 What was your first instrument? The saxophone or? Uh, C melody saxophone. Ah. Yeah. 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 Those yeah. kind of went out of favor. Yeah. After when was the last time that you actually played a C melody saxophone? I don't know. I had one at home. The friend uh, uh, gave me. He p passed away. But he gave me a C melody saxophone and a, and a Gemeinhard flute. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, the C melody was good because I guess you could read the piano music. Yeah. 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 Right. Did you take lessons in school, or were you mostly? Yeah, I started taking lessons when I was uh, in seventh grade. Mm hmm. At what point did you uh, get away from the actual written music and and start kind of improvising? Well, I don't know. I always improvised. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the very beginning, you know. Uh -huh. after, even after I learned, learned to read music, yeah, I still improvised. The swing music of the time that might have been coming through Ohio, did you have a chance to go out and hear any of the bands that, that you were hearing on the radio? Uh, well, later after I graduated from high school, um, I heard a couple of bands. I think I heard Artie Shaw's band when he had Billy Holiday with him. And uh, Lionel Hampton. And uh, that's about it. This was, let's see, late 30s? Yeah. Uh-huh. Late, late, late 30s, early 40s. Early 40s. Yeah. So the swing era was kind of in full, in full swing, I oh, should yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. A lot of bands out there. Yeah. What, uh, did you have experience, uh, what would World War II bring yeah. for you? World War II? Well, the, during the war, I was in a band in Cincinnati, Ohio, at the Cotton Club. And uh, we played there, we played maybe uh, three or four sessions a day. You know. First for dancing? Yeah, for dancing, and we had a floor show. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then you started, uh, did you ever have to work non musical jobs to get by? Or oh, yeah. I, I, during the war, I worked at uh, Curtis Wright. Uh, On the they assembly? Made, made airplane engines. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Swept the floor, right. mopped the floor. Yeah. Played at night, played gigs at night. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Before I was in high school, I used to shine shoes. Yeah. Father got me a job at a couple of barber shops. Yeah. Shine shoes. Mm -hmm. What did your father do for a living? He's a laborer. Uh huh. Did you have a big family? You yeah, said you uh, a couple. Five. Yeah. Brother and sister and my mother and father. Mm -hmm. um, gee, by the mid-40s then, you started playing with some fairly yeah. well-known names, Tiny Bradshaw, mm -hmm. and was this road work? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. like time to leave home and, and yeah, go out? Yeah, well, and... I've been working in Cincinnati at this cotton club for maybe a year or so, and uh, I left there and went to St. Louis where I joined the the Judah Pillars Orchestra. You, you ever heard of them? Yep. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, I would work with Judah about, I guess, about a year. And then I left him and went to join Tiny Bradshaw. And uh, after Tiny Bradshaw, I went to join Billy Eckstein there. And uh, that was the end of my road work for a while. I went back home. Yeah. yeah. What was life like on the road? in those days? Was it you know, mostly bus travel, first yeah, of all? Yeah, bus. Yeah. But sometimes you took a train. Mm -hmm. What about accommodations at that uh, time? Accommodations were terrible. You know, yeah. we, could, we couldn't stay in hotels then. Uh -huh. You know, um, we had to go across the tracks and stay at people's houses. In fact, the first hotel I, I stayed in, White Hotel, was in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I was playing with Ray Charles. And they, Gee. And they just, uh, Opened it up, you know, with Bobby Ruby Stater. That was in the 60s, right? Yeah, that was 1967. Yeah. Uh, well, when you would get to a town with, uh, let's say, Billy Eckstein, was someone in the group um, responsible for going to the other side of the tracks yeah, and trying to find... Yeah, well, some, uh, somebody who was, who was there, who lived there, would put us in different people's homes. Oh. Yeah. So they knew you were coming. Yeah. So. And they'd come down and... Yeah. And they, they would made a few dollars off of that because you had to pay or someone in the orchestra had to pay for your putting you up in a... Yeah, but we paid our own, own, uh, own for our own accommodations back oh. in those days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> paid for our own. Wow. Well, by the time you got to the end of the week, what kind of salary were you making in those days? Well, um, with Bill Eckstein, I think I made more than I'd ever made. I made $25 a night. You know. Mm -hmm. You worked almost every night. Yeah. I guess for those times that was yeah it wasn't too you could have done worse yes yeah, right <laughs> and you were doing what you liked yeah. were you playing alto through most yeah. of this it's always been alto play lead alto uh huh mm -hmm. how much chance did you get in those bands to uh, get up and solo well I had a few solos in every band I played in you know usually a ballad or maybe a jump blues something like that mm -hmm. were there certain artists at the time on record that you were being influenced by? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I've always been influenced by Johnny Hodges and, and uh, Benny Carter and Willie Smith, who played lead with uh, Jimmy Lesser's band. Yeah. And uh, later in his later years, he played with the Harry James band. Some great people there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When was your first chance to get on record? Was it with Eckstein or even before that? Yeah, I think it was, with, uh, it was Eckstein. It was during, during the Great Record Strike in New York. During, during it? Yeah. Oh, how did that work? Well, I don't know. <laughs> he walked up many, many flights of steps to the studio, and uh, Petrillo had everybody closed up back in those days. Yeah. yeah. So were those particular recordings you made that day, they probably weren't released until after the strike was over? No. Uh, they were uh, all on national records, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you do any of those um, V discs no. during the? No. Uh -huh. So you moved back to Ohio. Yeah, after I left V's band, I back to, back home. Enough of this bus stuff, huh? Yeah, I, I'm sorry I left because they they were on the way to California. I've oh. never been to California before. Oh. So I regret that to this day. Yeah. Yeah. What happened when you got back home? You... Well, I got a little group together, worked mm -hmm. around Ohio. Kentucky, Indiana. Then I went back to New York, uh, I guess about 19, uh, 1950s, in the 50s. Yeah, early 50s, I think. I had a group around New York for a while, and uh, 
And uh, but, but I got one from New York to Philadelphia. I lived in Philadelphia about six years. Mm -hmm. Played with, with Elmer Snowden. Yeah. The small group thing you were doing, was it um, strictly jazz? Was it more rhythm and blues? Was it uh, dance no, music? No, it was jazz. And yeah. we, you could dance to it. Yeah. Sure. It was jazz, but you could dance to it. And, sure, yeah. 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 That was such a big part of this music, the, the dancing part of it. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, you know, when you're playing jazz, the most important thing is if you're going to play jazz and dance, but you have to have, to have the right tempos, you know, where people feel it. Of course, now we're at the Cotton Club in Cincinnati. We had a great, great little band, about 10 pieces. Mm -hmm. And you knew if the, if the people weren't getting up off their seats that you weren't doing something right? Yeah, they always got up. <laughs> or if they got up and then sat down, that was even worse. I never saw them do that. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, the tempo, I mean, makes a huge difference. And mm -hmm. it's not exactly the notes. It's, you know, especially yeah, for dancers. That's right. Yeah. Well, um, you've g gone through some really famous groups. And uh, during the 50s, you said you lived in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Good music city. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, how did uh, rock and roll affect your career? Oh, it, it affected, affected quite a bit, you know. As a matter of fact, I, I never have, uh, for, I remember when, when, when it first started, I was in Philadelphia, I worked with Boomus Moose Jackson, he had a big band, and uh, he had a rock band. Uh, like one thing I say about them, they were loud. Oh, they <laughs> Yeah, they were good and loud. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when I worked with Bull Moose, uh, 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 Coltrane was in the band. John Coltrane was in his band. And uh, we played the Apollo Theater. Uh -huh. John Coltrane left and went to uh, John went to John Monk. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard even the players like Coltrane did walk the bar and all that no, kind of. No. <laughs> do don't that. think so, huh? I don't. Th I, I, I never saw him do. No, I never I saw him either. But I, I, I played with Paul. We was man. He used to walk the bar. Yeah. yeah. Is there a technique for walking the bar? <laughs> Technique is that you don't fall. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kick people's drinks over. Yeah, you know, um, first time I ever saw, saw a guy doing that kind of stuff was in New York at the place called the Apollo Bar. This guy uh, played tenor, I can't think of his name. He'd go and walk around the block, still blowing. <laughs> Get on the bus, come back, still blowing. And hopefully came back in the door and he was in the, still in the same yeah, place had, in the tomb, right? That's right. Meantime, rhythm second is still banging, <laughs> banging away. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. How did the um, thing with Ray Charles come about? Uh, let's see. I don't, know, I don't really remember. I think I was playing up in Mintz in New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I remember now. Uh, um, somebody recommended me to, to Ray, and he was going to Australia. So I'd never been uh, to Australia before, so I took it. Just on that, you know. Yeah. And uh, we went back to went back to Australia about three three more times with with Duke Ellington. Was the um, Ray Charles Orchestra a, f a fun group to play with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good man. Yeah. Johnny Coles was there. Uh, heavy set uh, baritone player was there from his first band. Had a good band. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to Ellington, you you consider yourself um, you heavily into bebop at, at that time. Are you more of a? I mean, do you, can you describe your own playing as opposed to someone else describing it? Well, you know, just just like. Like most, most people playing horns back in those days, everybody was influenced by Charlie Parker. You know, everybody was trying to play like Bird. Some people even started shooting up dope so they could play like Bird, you know. Thought that that was the secret, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, I used to try to copy him a little bit, but I, uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't know anything about uh, Charlie Parker until Sonny Stitt alerted me to him. Sonny was in the Tiny's band before I was, and he asked me, he used to come through Cincinnati a lot. I've never heard, heard, heard this cat named Charlie Parker. I, I never heard of him before, you know. But then I heard of him later, you know. I tried to play like him, but 
<laughs> that was my thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I went, I went back to my old little original stuff. Yeah. Which is what I where I play now. Yeah. yeah. Which is a combination yeah. of you know of blues and. Uh, so you were Ray Charles, and uh, 1969, he started subbing for Johnny Hodges. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Johnny got ill. Yeah, he was, he was out about two weeks. Uh-huh. And uh, I was working at Mittens then, I, I remember. I thought they called me up there. I was working at the small band. And they called me at Mittens, and uh, said Johnny was going to be sick. I, I think probably Stanley Dance was, was uh, had something to do with that. Oh, yeah. You know okay. Stanley Dance, don't you? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So he's the one that may have recommended yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you were certainly aware of Johnny Hodges yeah. for many years before that. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel stepping into his his place? I had no feelings about it at all. It was, yeah. it was a gig. I, I figured I'd be gone two weeks and come, come on back home. You know? uh -huh. But I, I never, nothing, nothing was frightening or nothing like that. Yeah, well, good. Did the rest of the orchestra, were they supportive of you in that position? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, uh, the second night I was with Duke, uh, they played a sacred concert. And I never heard that music before. You know, so <laughs> at rehearsal they pulled all this music out, you know. So I, was, I read it, you know. Clutie so, uh, was sitting right behind me and said, damn, that boy can read. <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of those fellas just had the charts all memorized, right? Oh, yeah. 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 You know, a number of people have said, and I, I've read a couple times, that, that the Ellington group could be just swinging like crazy one night, and the next night not sound half as good. Oh, yeah. Or even in the middle of a night, go from one to the next. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's like, like everybody else, they have the ups and downs. Yeah. yeah. But, but when they're up, nobody could touch them. I remember one time we played a gig in Binghamton, England, I think. Been on riding a bus all day from London. Everybody was tired. So that night we got to the gig, everybody got ripped. That's the best I've ever heard them sound. Yeah. Yeah. In Binghamton, New York. Binghamton, in Binghamton. Uh, oh, you were in England? England yeah. Uh, oh, I, I think see. This is Binghamton, uh, a resort on, 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 a, on the ocean. Uh huh. Uh, Oh, okay, you went from London to yeah. this place. All mm -hmm. right, I misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So you got, to, obviously, overseas, some overseas work. And oh, yeah. This was after Hodges died, and you mm -hmm. became the, the lead alto player. That lasted for, what, about four years? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it certainly was an institution. Yeah. Who was in the saxophone section uh, the first time you played with them? Uh, Harry Carney, Russell Proko, Harold Ashby, Paul Gonzalez, and, uh, and me. Good company. Mm -hmm. um, you were able to play uh, at his 70th birthday concert. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, that at, uh, was that at Carnegie Hall? Or was well, you made a recording. Uh huh. Called his 70th birthday. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what. Where was the Carnegie Hall? It probably was. What's what's it been like since uh, since then? You left them seventy three. Seventy three. Yeah. Uh, but I played the Broadway Theater for ten years. Mm -hmm. I played uh, Raisin. I played uh, Amos Behaven. I played um, Guys and Dolls. Uh, sophisticated Ladies. That was about ten years there. Yeah. That's a, a good study gig for, oh, yeah. for musicians. That's, that's the best gig you can get in New York. Yeah. A lot of competition for that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the same way to get into that as it is to, you know, you get recommendation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason how I got started, a friend of mine, George Dorsey, uh, was trying to get that same show. So uh, I just bought a new Vobles, and the show was in Philadelphia. So we drove up to, over to Philadelphia. And uh, met the leader, the music conductor. You know, so he he talked to the contractor, and uh, that's how I got it. Mm -hmm. George and I got it. 
did it ever get to be tiresome, night after night? We well, have. Yeah. The only show I played that didn't get tiresome was A Misbehaving. Small band. Yeah. Yeah. Was that when you were on stage? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that show, mm -hmm. and uh, they had the band right on the stage. Yeah. Makes you pay attention a little more. <laughs> so. Yeah. I had a uh, um, piano player. He was playing. A, Hank Jones? Hank Jones. He was on piano. Selden Powell on tenor. Uh, I played alto, clarinet. Virgil Jones played trumpet. Nice, nice little band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good gig. Yeah. How about uh, tell me about the Savoy Sultans? Oh, yeah. My wife told me Panama called called yesterday. Oh. He's down in Florida now. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing okay. Yes. He has, you no. Know, he has. He's very sick, but uh, he's feeling a lot better now. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been a fun group to be in. Yeah, it was. Talk about swinging and. Uh, Dancers? Yeah. 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 But uh, it was really nice. He made a couple of tours, made a few uh, recordings. Panama, France, and it's the Voice Sultans. Most of those guys that you were in that band now, they all, they all passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was in that group um, while you were there? Well, the piano player was Red Richards. He's still living. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the bass player's dead. The guy, the lead trumpet player's dead. And the other trumpet player, the ball the guy, he's still living. Uh, let's see. Panama's still with us. Yeah. Uh, the alto player has passed away. So we had two altos and a tenor. I think the tenor player's gone too. Did that group get recorded? Yeah, yeah. we recorded, uh, made two albums in, in Paris. Uh-huh. What's it like to play overseas? Is it any different than playing in the States? Well, the people appreciate it more over there. Yeah? Yeah. You know, uh, basically, uh, our jazz over there is like being in, in a symphony, you know? It's more like, they, like classical music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think of Staying over there, like a number of yeah, I've, I've thought about it, but I, I haven't done it yet. Yeah, too late now. <laughs> <laughs> What's the music scene like in uh, in your hometown? Well, it's, it's fair. It's not too good. Not 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 as good as it used to be. When, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I get a few gigs. I do a little traveling. Uh huh. Collect my social security and my pension. And yeah. Go on. Now your pension. I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, the. You know, musicians um, traditionally have not worked under the same benefits that a person who works in a factory or whatever. Do you have a pension from the union? Yeah, yeah. Uh, usually you get, get your pension from playing Broadway shows or okay. recording. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I played Broadway for 10 years. Mm -hmm. But as far as... Uh, but a, a, a Duke didn't pay into the pension fund, so I got no pension from him. Yeah. Or Ray Charles. No uh -huh. value is paid into the pension fund. Uh-huh. But when you, when you get on Broadway, they have to pay into it. Right. Yeah. It's a little more regulated. Mm hmm Yeah. I, I sometimes wonder what musicians like Harry Carney and so forth, who spend all those years on that band, mm -hmm. if, if he had wanted to retire, could he have, you know, just stopped playing? Would he have had, unless he had saved up? Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have gotten any pension from Duke Ellington. Yeah. Because Russell Prokop went down to the Union to see, about, see if, if they had a pension uh, down there. Duke never paid into it. Nothing. So he had no pension. Yeah. Is there any, uh, a dark side to the music business for you or any people you know that, that we don't hear about as much? Is it, is it a tough life? In, in some regards. Oh, yeah, it's a very tough life. Very tough life. Whenever I teach, I tell my students, uh, don't, uh, don't depend on music to make a living by it. Go to school and get a degree. Mm-hmm. You know, because you can't make it on music. Uh-huh. 
unless you're going into rock and roll or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The the music of the 40s, the popular music, was swing, mm -hmm. so that you could make a living at that oh, yeah. time, I guess. Oh, yeah. From band to band. Uh-huh. Yeah. Was there much room um, in the studio scene for black musicians during the, let's say, the 40s? No. No. Not really. Not, not even on Broadway or in the studios. There, there were maybe uh, two or three token guys who, who made all the studio gigs, you know. But, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I never even thought about that. You know, and uh, my, a lot of things I didn't know about the union. I didn't know about the pension. I didn't know about the hospitalization. I just happened to l uh, luck up on it. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, the musician union was uh, certainly a huge part of yeah. music back. Th I don't know if it's as strong nowadays, but if you were in it back then, I guess it was. You know, mm -hmm. may pay some dividends for you. Mm -hmm. And you. Probably have to do a fair amount of traveling these oh, yeah. days to sure. to work. Yeah, that's right. And is it Wilmington you live in? I live in Kettering, Ohio. Oh, okay. That's about 36 miles uh, south southwest of uh, Wilmington. Uh huh. Yeah. But you're not going to get six nights of work in oh, no. Kettering. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't expect to. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. We just live there. You know, it's a very nice, quiet, peaceful place. Mm hmm Yeah. We just live there. You know? Yeah. I work in Kettering every now and then at a place called uh, Faze uh, Pavilion right down the road from us. It's a new place. I opened it up. But uh, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, small clubs around Kettering, but the, the money is terrible. You know? yeah. yeah, right. The way you I work with 30 or 40 or $50 a night. Yeah. That's more just to like keep your chops up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. Let me go back to uh, to Ellington for a minute. Um, what was he like to work for? He was all right. He yeah. was nice. Yeah. Because, uh, of course, after he got he became ill, he got a little edgy. I think because nobody knew he was that sick. I, I, I didn't know he was that sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, but. Uh, One day he gave me a chance to blow, you know. When I was in, I was in the band, I guess about six weeks. We were playing in Lima, Ohio, and uh, I been practicing my flute, you know, every day. You every practice. So he called me to his dressing room one night. And he said, uh, "Go on, come in and bring your flute in, man." So he started playing some on the, on the piano. Da, 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 da. I said, "I played behind it." So he, he wrote me a tune called Fife. All right. That's how Fife was born. Well, that's an honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. I see you have a fairly recent record out. Yeah, it's been out, uh, I guess, about a year or so, a couple uh -huh. of years. I was supposed to do another one uh, last last month, but he didn't call me. But I went out even after that. I made with uh, uh, Jody Christian in Chicago. You, you ever heard of him? Piano player? Jody Christian. Oh, no, I thought you said Charlie Christian. Oh, Jody Christian. Okay. He's a very fine pianist. Uh huh. Yeah. And we made an album. Uh, is it on a certain label? It's on uh, Delmark. Delmark. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of product out there these days, and it's uh, kind of hard to find your space in the uh, with all the jazz floating around out there. Yeah. I, I hope it does well. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you go to make an album, you sit down and collect a whole bunch of tunes and then put put them in a certain order and figure out what's going to be a good balance? Yeah, well, usually we know, usually you'll know in advance what you're going to do. You know, certain tunes and it'll go around your head. And you just discuss it, try it, see if it works, doesn't work. Uh-huh. Do try something else. Yeah. How much time do uh, you usually get in a studio to do an album? Um, well, the album that I made, uh, there, was, there was no time limit. We just stayed there all, all day, half the night, you know, until we finished it. Uh-huh. 
But uh, in New York, uh, you have a certain like, certain period of time like, to, to, to do it in. The girls know by six at that time anyway. Right. Do it to us, good. Oh, yeah, that's good. When you teach, um, you said you teach some students mm -hmm. now and then. If you're trying to teach them to improvise, do you have a way that you can put it into words? No. I, I, I always believe that you that, that's something you can't teach. And improvise has to be, be born within you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the God-given gift. You know, you, even if you can uh, tell somebody uh, write a write a solo and play it, but uh, you can't teach people to improvise. Well, what if you've got somebody who really wants to do it? And they obviously don't have it. <laughs> How do you tell them, you don't got it? Well, you just let them find out for themselves. Yeah. Well, I listen to them, you know. And because uh, most of the students I've, that I've taught, they try to play like me. But uh, that's not imp improvisation. That's, that's copy. Uh -huh. Impro improvise something that comes from within you. When you are improvising on a, a standard, <coughs> are you playing, uh, oh, I'm not sure how to put this. Are you playing mostly by ear, or are you thinking of yeah. the chord changes? Or yeah, well, well, most of the things I play, I know the chord changes anyway, so I can do just about anything I want to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to think about the chord changes, unless it's a new tune that I haven't played before. Mm. Do you play any, any keyboard to... Uh, Help you learn? Have you over yeah, the well, years? Yeah, I, I, I took piano lessons before I took saxophone lessons. Uh huh. Yeah. About a year. Yeah. What about studio work over the years? Did you ever play jingles? Uh, get into any of that? No. Studio scene? Didn't get into that. That, that, no. that studio, the big time scene in New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some guys tell me, it's like, wow, I need ten thousand. Like, you know, and some guys. Uh, Again, pensions as high as four thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they you were. See, doing... I wasn't hip to that. <laughs> yeah, they were doing three sessions a day sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What's in the future for, for you, um, coming up? Well, this is the same thing I'm doing now. Yeah. You know, play a little bit. Relax. I'm, I'm a great television fan. Uh -huh. I, I like to watch sports. Yeah. And. Uh, I like to drive my car. So, you know, nothing, uh, I'm, I'm 76 now, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really semi-retired. You've, you know? you've seen a few years in the music business. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice that these parties um, are around. Yes. Yeah. So that you can get out occasionally and That's right. see some of your old Yeah, it's, it's old my friends. third year for this uh -huh. Jerome Festival. Yeah. It's really nice. Well, when you uh, you get that schedule when you get here, mm -hmm. it must be interesting to look and see whom I'm going to play with this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ralph called me uh, before I came, uh, came out here. He asked me, well, I don't play with that. I said, anybody, man. You know, get, all these guys are great. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get in a situation at, at in, uh, any of these parties where someone calls a tune and you don't really know it? Well, if I, I don't know that time, I don't know that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So pick something else. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I don't know that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good, rather than trying to fumble your way oh, yeah, through yeah. it. Yeah. You know, that's not really... Oh, no, it's no good. You have, to, you have to really know. You know, after I go over it a few times, but on uh, spirit of the moment, I don't do that. If I don't know it, I don't play it. Mm-hmm. That's somebody else playing. Who knows it? If you were to... Uh, be able to make a tour of the world, make like a couple different spots to play in. Mm -hmm. Have you been to places in the world that you'd love to go back to? Yeah, uh, uh, place in, uh, you know something? I went there about three times with Duke. Bangkok. Bangkok? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, Bangkok, great town, man. Now, wasn't that, Bangkok where the the king or whoever they called him was yeah, a jazz fan? Yeah, yeah, we met him. Yeah? Uh, Did he play? Actually? No, he didn't play. He just, just loved the music. Yeah. Huh? 
Yeah, I like Bangkok. Uh, I like Hong Kong. In the States, uh, I like Chicago. But after I lived in New York City for 30 years, I don't want to live in any other cities. Uh huh. Yeah. 30 years in New York. <laughs> That's I, I want to be out where I hear the birds sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your, um, do you listen to a lot of music these days? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a station in uh, from my Oxford University in Miami, Miami University. They have a jazz station, but good jazz mm -hmm. all day long. Do you hear new stuff that you like that pick that you know perks your ear up? Every now and then, they they stick mostly to uh, Basie, uh, Jimmy Lasford, Benny Goodman, um, John Coltrane. You know people like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a it's background until I turn on the TV. Uh -huh. I turn on turn on. Until that game's on. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Which is your favorite sport? My favorite sport is football. Yeah. So I, we'll know tomorrow if you run off the stage that you'll be going up to your room to check on the football games, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Who's your team these days? You have a favorite? I like I like the, the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Yeah. But the, you know the, the number one team is uh, uh, Colorado, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Denver. Yeah, Denver. Yeah. Right? They, they haven't lost any games at all. Haven't Undefeated. They? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a fan too. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm a Giants fan, which isn't very much fun a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you know, Green Bay, um, they were doing pretty good. So they, they were, they've lost two games so far. Uh -huh. Well, it's a good pastime. Yeah, it is. And uh, yeah. I know a lot of uh, musicians are, are sports fans. And mm -hmm. in fact, some of the the big bands used to actually have little baseball teams. Oh, I, yeah, I that's or, right. Yeah. yeah, Duke had one. Basie had one, too, I think. Yeah. Softball team. Uh-huh. Um, you like basketball? Yes, sir. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Chicago? Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not a good team to root for in the last few years, but... Got to be a you know, got to be a fan. And stick with it. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, I've been fascinated to talk to you. And uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you that that you'd care to? Well, no, that's that's just about covers it. You know, I can't think of anything else because I, I work with many many small groups all all of you know, especially in Ohio. They're all very good groups, you know, local groups. Do you have any recollection of, of a gig that, or series of gigs that was just plain as disaster, that you couldn't wait till they were over? Oh, no, not really, because I enjoy playing the music uh -huh. so much. Although there were some things that weren't too, too good, but uh, the music overwhelmed all of it. Yeah, yeah. that's good to hear. Uh -huh. Well, great. Um, hope you have a good gig tonight. And yeah. Did you bring your flute and clarinet with you? No. You're just doing an alto no. thing. Yeah. 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 I hadn't played flute for a long time. Yeah. Clarinet either. They asked me to play flute on my next record date, but I hadn't played. I had to wish it for a while. I hadn't played it for quite a while. Uh huh. Yeah. You work with uh, Russ Dantzler. Out of New York? Yeah, Russ, huh? Yeah. yeah. Like, like he no, sent me on a tour of Germany uh -huh. this year, I think it was. Yeah. Or last year. Well, you're in good company with him. He's got Benny Waters. And yeah. He's got the, the fiddle player, what's his name? Claude. Claude, yeah. 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 Is I saw him got a copy of Claude's schedule. Boy, he's doing it every day. He's out there. Yeah. Actually, he's going to be up in our area in, in, uh, in November. Really? And I'm going to play with him, actually. Yeah, okay. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, well, Claude, he's in his he'll almost be, 90, isn't he? will be 90 in February. Mm. Yep. Doesn't look it. Well, thanks for your time today. Hey. And thank you. Uh, I'll be listening tonight. And okay. Play some hot blues licks for me. Yeah, I will. All thank right. You. All right.